Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I have a wonderful show today. This is one that you want to watch all the way through. Listen in, everybody, because I've been able to re-invite back to the show for the second time the gentleman that I call the king of coffee. And you're going to find out why. And everybody knows I love to drink coffee and Mr. Jim Fasina, the founder and CEO of Amora Coffee, is back on the show today because we have some very important news and a very important announcement about Amora Coffee. But for entrepreneurs that tune into the show uh, religiously and love the show, I want to thank you for coming today's to today's show because you're going to learn something very interesting because Jim and his wonderful world-class team at Amora Coffee They've been in business for 10 years. As a matter of fact, they're, they're having a big celebration co coming up. And the way in which they approach the celebration is very unique and very interesting because at Amora Coffee, besides having the world-class coffee that they offer, it's all about celebrating their customers. And let me tell you, they've got a lot of them and the customers absolutely love the offering and Jim's been doing this with his team for 10 years and they're having a giant celebration about their customer and as you know it as as a valued listener a valued watcher of the show that it's all about the customer that's how you build a great business and that's how Jim and his team at Amora Coffee have been able to do it we're going to learn more about that so this is a great show for entrepreneurs as well and buckle up a little bit because we're going to be offering some interesting things below the interview from Amora Coffee for listeners of the show and watchers of the show who love their coffee as much as I do. But anyway, that's a long-winded introduction to someone I'm so excited to have, the king of coffee, Mr. Jim Fasina. Welcome to the Dot Com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Andy, how are you? Thank you very much. That was very kind. And it is so, it's great to be back on the show with Dot Com Magazine and uh, uh, really look forward to chatting with you today. We are super excited about uh, our 10-year uh, anniversary. This is, as you were saying, this is not a work anniversary. This is a celebration around our customers who have been uh, super loyal to us um, throughout the last 10 years. And, and we've been loyal to them. It's sort of like a marriage. And so we're celebrating 10 years of just um, wonderfulness with, uh, with, with Amora and all of our customers who have made it um, which who have allowed us to get to uh, 10 years and bring us forward. So i um, very excited to be here. Thank you. Jim, it's absolutely wonderful. You know, you've been at it for 10 years. And for the people that don't know about Amora, in the unlikely event you're not drinking it, you should, because the reviews are all five star. I mean, it's remarkable coffee. This premium coffee, once people get it in the subscription service, they be basically become raving fans of it. I mean, they tell everybody else about it. They go on, they do five-star reviews. I mean, they love the coffee. They can't get enough of it. And for the people watching the show, this is roasted in the USA by fifth generation master roasters. Uh, they're very, very devoted to bringing you the perfect cup of coffee. All of the coffee gets hand-packed in foil-lined bags to protect the flavor and aroma. I love the packaging. They had an artist draw just the most beautiful little uh, vignettes on all the packages, and it gets shipped directly to you. And when they when they come, when, when the packages come, they're so super fresh, and the taste is beyond like any coffee you've ever had before. But let's pull the lens back a little bit, Jim to 30,000 feet, before we talk about the big anniversary where you're really celebrating your customers, uh, and, and let's talk about a more coffee. Let's talk a little bit about the entrepreneurial journey. So the entrepreneurial journey, um, we could say it started uh, 10 years ago with Amora Coffee, but it probably started over 30 years ago with uh, my partner and I. Uh, we both actually started our careers in uh, coffee and uh, worked for a very large uh, company, Kraft General Foods, and had the opportunity to um, sell coffee directly to consumers. And as we moved through our journey of um, the corporate side of the business, we chose to take the entrepreneurial side um, over 20 years ago. And, uh, in, and, and once you make that switch from uh, over to the entrepreneurial side, it's so hard to go back. It's uh, because you get, to, you get to learn and explore so many different things. But 
you know, within the past 20 years, um, you know, one of our uh, one of the biggest things we're proud of is that, uh, you know, we launched a um, an agency, a direct to consumer marketing firm that helped over 100 clients bring their product to uh, market over a 17 or 18 year period. And so, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of direct to consumer marketing. During that time, we launched Amora Coffee, which was uh, 10 years ago. We, we've since sold that agency and we've been um, devoted to um, Amora Coffee and, uh, uh, you know, being loyal to our customers in, in, in return to their loyalty to us. But, you know, every day when you wake up, there is something new in the entrepreneurial world. Some of them are good. Some of them aren't so good. And uh, I think, Andy, you and I have talked about this before. For, for everything that great happens today, there's probably something that you could have done better. And uh, what I love about our customers is our customers um, not only tell us when we're doing something great, they also tell us when we could do something better. And, and that is so valuable to us because when they tell us we could do it better, that gives us the competitive advantage to be better. And um, in the world of entrepreneurism, uh, the, it's, it's, it's fiercely competitive. And so um, our customers are uh, very generous with um, helping us along our journey. Jim, I love that so much. You know, I speak to so many very interesting and important and successful entrepreneurs like yourself that are leading great companies, world-class companies. And one thing that always comes very clear to me is the fact that they like to have their open discussions with their customers. In other words, that customer feedback loop is very, very important. So let's talk about how important open discussions with your customers have been in developing this world-class brand that you've been able to build in Amora Coffee. Our customers have helped us um, in our research and development. Um, so, for example, you know, it's our, we bring what we believe is a super quality product to market. Um, it is a super quality product. And one of the things that uh, early on in our journey, we didn't want to launch flavored coffees because we felt that, well, if you were developing a really strong, great um, single origin coffee, would, would you really want to mix in with flavors? And our customers said, absolutely. We want, we, we want the best coffee with a flavoring that we like added to it. And so please don't make that decision without us. Please include us in that decision. And throughout that time, we have launched multiple different flavors. And um, today, flavors flavored coffee is a significant part of our business. That, that's one example. Other examples are our customers have told us, well, we don't, even though you're available 24-7, 365, and somebody's going to answer the phone, well, we don't want to call. We just want to go online, and we want to be able to manage our own account or send you an email or let's chat about it, but we really don't want to get on the phone, okay? And so we learned from that, and we launched our online dashboards, and um, you know, most of our customers now interact with us in online in their own um, self-service. Um, our customers have um, told us whether or not they want two bags or three bags or one bag, or if they want, you know, they have been so helpful in helping us uh, develop a proper curated um, experience for them. Uh, and, and they've also been very helpful in telling us when we've had um, issues in, um, in, in our service. Like, so for example, last fall, everybody in the direct to consumer space had issues in getting packages to the doorstep in a timely manner as COVID was going on and everybody was purchasing throughout, um, you know, throughout um, the, the online mechanisms. And so we got our, we got feedback and that helped us go back to our carriers and increase our service so that we can get our product to our consumers faster. What the worst thing you could do is have one of your loyal customers wake up, not have coffee in their pantry and force them to go out and cheat on you. I love that. I love that so much. And listen, we all need a good cup of coffee. And, and something interesting as well, besides the premium coffee that you've developed with your world-class roasters, and of course, you know, roasted in the USA by your fifth generation, you know, master roasters who are really devoted to the taste and the smoothness and of the blend that Amora Coffee has become known for. You actually have 
a wonderful line of tea as well that is get, that has gotten great reviews. So maybe we could touch on that. But I want to also get into this 10th anniversary of celebrating the customer because I have been uh, been given a little view of what's about to happen here at Amora Coffee. It's very exciting. But talk about the teas a little bit, Jim, because the teas are are fabulous. I mean, you, you can use the teas, you know, for the morning if you want an afternoon relaxation. I know you got some good feedback from your customers that said, hey, we like to relax in the afternoon. Maybe you could put a tea together in that way. And you've done that and you've done that very well. It, it's exactly what you just said, Andy. And um, lots of our customers drink both coffee and tea. Uh, or they have um, uh, different drinking habits within the household. So we've launched green teas, black teas, um, herbal teas. And it, it really, one of the things that we really learned from our tea line, um, of, which, of, of which we have a fair number of subscribers to our uh, tea line, uh, we learned that customers are looking for more organic products. Okay, maybe, no surprise. Okay, um, they're also looking for more fair trade products. Okay, so in, in, in addition to some of the things we just talked about that we're going, we're going to launch, um, coming out just in a couple of weeks time is we're launching our fair trade line and we're launching an organic line in coffee. Okay, and we learned that through our tea connoisseurs. Uh, and so we're, we brought that, to, um, we took that to heart, we're bringing it to market and uh, it, it's gonna, it still has the more name Okay, but it's going to be a very different cup of coffee and it's going to appeal to others in the household um, that have asked for our attention. I love it. It's great. It's so wonderful because you could start the day maybe with some coffee if that's your preference. But then throughout the day, maybe you want to have a nice relaxing, you know, herbal blend of tea in the afternoon. You can have that. And again, it's all from Amore. It's all the world class coffee and teas. Now, Something that's very interesting, Jim, is, you know, obviously a lot of businesses change through COVID and the pandemic. But what people might not realize is that you and your, your co-founder, Jim, you started the subscription service to coffee way before COVID. You were sort of the original originator of the subscription service. So let's talk about that because, you know, so many people started a subscription service in the past couple of years, but you've been doing it for, you know, many, many years. So um, our co-founder, Marina Di Domenico, and I have been in direct-to-consumer now for over 30 years. Um, am I dating myself? Maybe. Okay. But, uh, but with 30 years of uh, marketing direct to consumer, um, there, there, there's a lot that we have learned um, with, our, uh, with, with, with our customers. And so it wasn't, it wasn't like we woke up during COVID and said, we have to get coffee into the uh, household when, or tea. When, when, when COVID hit um, for us, we had to make sure that uh, we were able to adjust and pivot to the increased need of our customers because our customers were now working from home. They were studying from home and we needed to be able to uh, provide them with more coffee or more tea. But we also were very, very conscious and focused on the fact that we wanted to um, give back to our consumers during COVID because, you know, it, no, nobody was looking to profit off of a pandemic and our consumers turned to us and were looking to um, receive more coffee. And so we put out all sorts of um, specials. And, and, and if you subscribe and save, um, we, we actually gave all of our uh, customers who used our subscribe and save um, mechanisms uh, an 18 percent off discount uh, just 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 because we wanted to help. OK, and which was that's how we reacted um, during uh, COVID. But, you know, during during the past 30 years, um, we have been optimizing our direct to consumer practices and they change because consumer purchase behavior changes. And, you know, 25 years ago, uh, you know, the the customer was generally loyal to the brand. And today the brand needs to be loyal to the customer. I think you, you've heard me say that before. OK, but when you get the loyalty of the brand to the consumer and then the consumer becomes loyal to the brand, you have an unbreakable bond. OK, and, and that unbreakable bond is that marriage. OK, and, and that's what we're celebrating today is that unbreakable bond that we have with so many of our customers um, over the past 10 years who've entrusted us 
to bring uh, their coffee and their tea into their home and, and who have helped us um, build our business to where it is today. So it is, it is truly a 10 year anniversary of love, respect. And, um, and, and it's not just, it, it's not just a uh, work anniversary and it's, it's, it's a celebration of our customers. It's a celebration of our team. It's a celebration of all of our partners that help us and, and enable us to provide the service that we provide to our uh, consumers. That's, that's what this is all about. We are, we, we are celebrating a um, 10 years of togetherness. I love it, Jim. And obviously, you know, for entrepreneurs watching this show, you might want to rewind the last minute or two of what Jim said, because, you know, you can go to Harvard and get an MBA and you're going to learn something in a classroom where you have a professor and a student. And if you're going to be a student, you're going to learn from a professor in a in an insular environment. But as entrepreneurs, we learn with our feet on the ground and we learn from listening to other great entrepreneurs. And really what Jim just said is the key. I mean, Jim could be a professor at Harvard giving this lecture because it's all about the customer. It's all about that relationship with the customer. And, and if you don't have customers that love your offering, you don't have a business. And what I love, Jim, what you've been able to do through the 10 years is build this loyalty. It's really powerful and a great lesson for the entrepreneurs watching the show today. Now, let's get into the 10-year anniversary of, of the customer, the 10-year anniversary of the loyalty, the 10-year anniversary of the, the customer saying to you and your team, hey, Jim and Team at Amore, we want this, we want that, maybe change this, tweak that. But by the time it was all done, you listen to the customers and you have a full body, pardon the pun, sort of offering with Amora Coffee. So let's talk about that a little bit because something that kind of caught my, my ear when we were talking prior to the interview I love the fact that you're doing a few things a little differently for your customers in celebration of them giving you back the love that you provide to them in the coffee. So let's talk about some of those things you're doing uh, with the anniversary blend and the exotic blend of the best coffees in the world. And then this other blend that I'm going to let you discuss that when I heard about it, I said to myself, it's early morning here, but I need to have a cup of that right now. So it's like any other anniversary type of uh, relationship. You're um, you're celebrating memories, right? So you're celebrating memories, and um, of course, there's good times and there's bad times, and you know, uh, so long as uh, you you muscle through it all together, uh, you, you're you're getting to a point where uh, you really need to celebrate. And you know, the, some of the memories we have um, with our customers, um, whether it was direct communication or indirect communication, or the Many of millions of bags of coffee that our customers have um, bought from us have um, have created um, these types of uh, memories for us that um, you know it's it's so it, it it it's it's so wonderful to go back and uh, look upon. So while while we may have um, built out a um, a really great service for our customers, we know that we're still at the um, leading edge of um, being able to provide even better service as as our customers will will want and and, and require new needs and desires. And uh, so so we're always looking at continuing to build. And so we're going to continue doing that. But we wanted to mark the 10 year anniversary with something a little special. OK. We put together a, um, a, a blend of um, coffees from unique origins uh, that really resonates into a cup of coffee that, um, that, that I personally um, am super proud of. And, and I, I have a pretty well-trained palate for uh, coffee. And this coffee just, just stands heads and shoulders above um, a, a, a lot of what is out there. And we're calling it our anniversary blend. And uh, we are going to launch that in the uh, coming weeks. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be a limited edition. And it's, it's for our anniversary. Okay. And it's just something to mark the day and mark the celebration. Um, but, but in addition to that, um, we, we, we listen to our customers and, and they, they like flavored coffee as well. So, so why not have another celebratory coffee? So we are also launching birthday cake. Yeah, that's what I said. 
birthday cake. So, and does it taste like birthday cake? Does it smell like birthday cake? You bet. Okay. It is, it is like having a cup of cake. And so um, we are launching our uh, birthday cake. And then, and then even, even in addition to that, how can you have a party without having candles? So um, we are launching a, uh, an Amora candle in honor of our anniversary so that um, we have a candle to, to celebrate. And so you're going to be able to buy these individually. We can kit them up for you and we're going to provide discounts. And it's just, you know, it's, it's just something that we want to be able to provide to our customers so that they recognize that we're here because of them, period. We're here because of them. And so um, myself and Marina and everyone on our team recognize that. And so it's uh, critically important for us to acknowledge our, uh, our wonderful customers. I think that's absolutely amazing, Jim. You know, it's so interesting what you and Marina have been able to do. And, and again, for the entrepreneurs watching the show, this is not something that Jim and Marina and, and their team have just come up with at the stroke of a pen or pulled out of a hat or rabbit out of the hat. They know from having this relationship with their customers what their customers are going to enjoy. They, they've, their job, their mission is to make their customers happy. So, so if you're a technologist or offer a service or a product, rewind this interview and start understanding the importance of the customer because nobody really understands the importance of that relationship better than Jim and Marina and the entire team at Amora Coffee. The entire company is built around the passion to give their customers exactly what they want in a way that's meaningful to them. And besides that, what makes something beautiful happen is when you're able to do that for your customers, the people on your team, the people on Jim and Marina's team feel that as well. So when they go to work in the morning, they have that same enthusiasm. They have that same passion. They have that same commitment to their particular jobs within Amora Coffee because they know that what they're doing is part of those millions and millions of bags of coffee that have gone out throughout the years. How many cups of coffee do you think that is, Jim? Do you have any idea? Oh, it's 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 a lot. Um, I'd actually have to do the calculation, but it's uh, it's a, it, it it would it would sort of look like one of those McDonald's signs on the road. Um, you know, so many serve. So, um, but but yeah, it's uh, we, we've been fortunate to serve a lot of cups of coffee, and um, and you know. You've heard me say this before, Andy, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to um, service a consumer, um, the first thing you need to do is to grow really thick skin. OK, and, and you need to have that thick skin because it, without it, you're, you're you're never going to be able to take to heart all of the wonderful stuff, whether it resonates good or bad from your customer. You're never going to be able to take on all of that um, input to to advance your business. That, that's the first thing you need to do thick skin. The second thing you need to do is surround yourself with people smarter than you are in the area of expertise that you need covered for your business. And, and, and our team, um, there's been, there's some people on our team that um, have been working with Marina and I for well over 20 years. Okay. And so, and, and, and our partners, we have a network of uh, partners that, uh, you know, we are just super proud to have. And, uh, and, and, and we're honored that they, um, they, they help us uh, bring our business forward. So, you know, it, again, it all comes down to the consumer. Without, without the consumer, I mean, we could, we could talk all we want about coffee. It's great. Okay. Um, but uh, without the consumer, there's really, not, there's really not much of an experience to speak of. You know, that's great, Jim. And I mentioned a few minutes ago to rewind a couple minutes to hear what you had to say about your passion for your customers. But really, the entire interview is very empowering. I mean, I'm even getting uplifted myself. And the reason why, Jim, is when I think about literally millions and millions and millions of cups of coffee, the thing that rings through about what you do, Jim, at Amora Coffee is that I know that you, Jim Ficina and Marina and the entire team stand behind every cup. So you can feel as a fellow entrepreneur speaking to you as an entrepreneur in your own right, how important even every single cup of coffee is. And I know that you want 
every single cup of coffee of the millions and millions and millions that have already been consumed and the millions and millions that are going to be consumed in the future to have, be an experience for your clients. And I would imagine that that's, that has to weigh a little bit on you. So let's talk about that from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Um, you know, what's the thing that keeps you up at night? What's the thing that, you know, gets you most kind of intense about thinking about the coffee going out to your customers? Is it that, you know, maybe uh, a bag is not, doesn't live up to the high expectation and standard and the five-star reviews that you've received for so many years? What's the thing that really makes your Godillas say to yourself, you know, that I'm worried about that in terms of our coffee? Um, I'll take it a little further. And uh, what I'm worried about in terms of our relationship with our customers is our number one operating principle at this company is to ensure that every interaction with every single customer ends in a better frame of mind than before the interaction started. That is our number one operating principle. And um, when we have times where we may not have lived up to that, um, that's what keeps me awake at night. Uh, what keeps me awake at night is not leaving a customer in a great frame of mind. Not, not because I'm afraid of the negativity that that customer might create. Look, we all know that a customer, a, a customer with great experience will tell one person, a customer with a bad experience will tell 100 people. That's not it, okay? It's more about falling down um, and, and, and failing on an operating principle. Are we ever going to have 100% um, effectiveness in what that operating principle is? Um, I don't know whether that's mathematically possible, but we are going to aspire to it every single day. And so that's what keeps me up at night. Um, and, and, and because if we, if, if, if we, everything else falls into place if you could do that, okay? Where are we getting our beans? How we're packaging our beans? What the roast is? What the taste is? Um, if we had somebody who received a damaged shipment, okay, so we replaced the shipment. If we somebody received a shipment of coffee and they just didn't like the flavor, okay, they 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 got elegante. And they they felt that they wanted something more rich, more bold. No problem. We'll send you Vigorosi or Intenso. It's on us. No big deal. We'll replace it. Okay. Why? Because we're in a long term relationship. Okay, this is not a set and forget business. There's nothing set and forget about it. Okay, and so you know it's in those areas. You know, last what what kept me awake last um, Q4? Um, you know, whether it was the United States Postal Service, whether it was UPS, whether it was FedEx, whether it was DHL. Okay, the system was clogged, and and we were trying to get coffee to people on time, and so um, we adjusted for it, and we made sure we gr uh, put more time in place to make sure nobody um, received their coffee later than expected. But sure, that kept me up at night because um, I didn't feel that that would have left a, a late shipment, wouldn't have left them in a better frame of mind than um, before they were supposed to receive the shipment. Those wow, are the that things that remarkable. keep me awake at night. That's remarkable, Jim. You know, I'm listening to you speak and maybe the moniker of the king of coffee is incorrect. Maybe I should call you the king of entrepreneurship because there's so much to learn. I mean, what you're saying really, really hits home and it hits home deep in me as well, because when I speak to entrepreneurs throughout the world, something a great entrepreneur, something that comes very clear is the fact that they, they really want to engage with their customers and they want to provide the best that they possibly can for their customers. But the thing I had not heard prior to our conversation today was, I love this idea that every interaction that you have with a customer, you want to leave that interaction in a better way. You want to leave it in a better place. You want them to have a, a better experience and a better understanding and a better feeling about your company than when they started the interaction. And that's so powerful because so many companies have forgot that. Like you mentioned the set and forget. And I feel that way with some companies that I do business with that they sort of set me and then they forgot me. Not at Amora Coffee. So it's really, really great. And again, for the entrepreneurs watching the show, 
you know, what comes through, Jim, from you, and I'm sure it comes through from Marina and your entire team, is that it didn't have to be coffee. I could have put you in the widget business, or I could have put you in the in the shirt button business, or I could have put you in the eyeglass business. With this frame of mind that you have about the customer, it's always a winning, winning mindset that builds great companies. And we talk about co corporate culture. It always starts at the top. So for the entrepreneurs watching the show, think about that as you're listening to Jim and of course, uh, maybe down the road, we'll have Marina on the show as well. But Jim, let's talk a little bit about entrepreneurship. I mean, obviously, the 10 years of celebrating the customers is going to be amazing. You've got this very exclusive 10-year anniversary blend that's going to be released. Uh, it's a very exotic blend from the best coffees in the world. You're launching this thing that I can't wait to get a hold of, which is the birthday cake blend, because uh, I love birthday cake. I mean, I, I, I've had a lot of birthdays, but I can't wait for my next birthday so I get to eat cake once a year. And then, of course, you're going to have um, the candle that's going to come out as well, because what's a birthday without a candle? And all these things that you're offering really came through data, came through feedback, came from understanding what your customers want and need. But let's talk about entrepreneurship, because People watching the show, they might be saying to themselves, well, you know, did Jim ever have an obstacle? Did, did Amora Coffee ever have a pothole in the road? And if they did, I'd love to learn from Jim about what to do when I hit a pothole. You know, maybe we have younger entrepreneurs that, of course, love coffee. And they might be saying to themselves, Jim, you know, I have a startup. I have a new business. And I'm hitting a pothole. And I'm, I don't know what to do. Maybe I'm freaking out a little bit because I've never experienced this. So maybe you could share some insight to the entrepreneurs who are hitting a pothole on how they can get through it and come out the other side smelling like a rose or smelling like your 10-year anniversary blend, if you will. Well, Andy, I can tell you that we have certainly hit a lot of potholes along the way, not only just in Amora Coffee, but in our other um, business endeavors. Uh, and, and, and if you're not hitting potholes along the way, you're not trying hard enough. Um, so the one thing I could tell you is as an entrepreneur and you're thinking about potholes and you're thinking about navigation, okay, the kryptonite of entrepreneurism is entitlement, okay? And, and if you feel that you're entitled to your product or your service or whatever it is that you're selling and it is a um it's it's supposed to be easy okay uh then then that's the biggest thing you can you have to navigate around it doesn't matter how successful any of us are i don't care who it is okay we all still put our pants on one leg at a time okay i haven't met anybody who can put their pants on both legs at the same time Okay, so, you know, at the end of the day, when you're trying to navigate potholes, put your ego aside, put any entitlement aside. Entitlement doesn't have, there's no room. There's no room in business, no room in entre entrepreneurism. There's no room in society for entitlement. Put it aside, get rid of it, okay? And really lean on your team and trust your team to help you navigate around these potholes. We have co-pilots for a reason, okay? So, you know, when you hit that pothole, don't panic, be assertive, okay? You know, I, I tease with my team all the time. If you hear me hooting and hollering about something, it's good, we're okay. If I get really quiet about something, Okay, well, that's probably not where we want to be because if we're hooting and hollering, we're navigating and we're figuring it out. Okay, so when you hit that pothole and you have to bail some water out of the bow of the ship, not all standing there in silence. Okay, we're all saying, you know, pull the buckets up. Okay, that's that's what it's all about. And don't don't panic, but 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 don't um, be passive. Okay, uh, you can't be passive about it. And so approach it, prioritize it. Don't get lost in the weeds, okay? If you hit a pothole and you start bottom up, I truly believe you can get lost in the weeds, okay? As opposed to looking top down, okay? And trying to find your way into the uh, issue, okay? So, um, you know, that, 
you know, if, 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 if you practice no, medi- no mediocrity allowed in your organization, you'll always navigate the pothole. You might, you might blow a tire, ding a, <laughs> ding a rim, okay? But you'll navigate it and you'll get through it. Wow, Jim, that's great advice. Obviously, leaning on the team, surrounding yourself with great people, putting together the best world-class team that you can makes all the sense in the world. There's so much to be proud of of what you're doing. I mean, I'm not even involved with Amora Coffee, but I'm proud of what you do as an entrepreneur because it's, it's really a shining light. And, and when you hear entrepreneur stories like this and other people hear these stories, there's people out there that don't know how to get started. They don't know what to do. They have an idea, but they just can't take that first step. And, and by following some of your advice, Jim, about putting the customer first and putting their needs and wants before your needs and wants really makes all the difference in the world. I know we've got a hard stop here. You've got so much going on at Amore with you and the team and, you know, the, the, the wonderful, you know, fifth generation master roasters devoting their basically entire life to bringing a perfect cup of coffee. And there's been millions and millions and millions of cups of Amora coffee drink, uh, that have been drank or drunk. Is it drink or drunk? You know better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go with drink. <laughs> that have been drank. Uh, Throughout the country, is it worldwide as well, Jim, or just the United no, States? Right now, it's domestic. We are we are a U.S. based um, operation. Uh, we we roast all of our company uh, uh, coffee right here in the U.S. Uh, we ship to the U.S. Um, we're very patriotic about our uh, product. This is an at home product, uh, Amora Coffee, and it's it's a it you know as as explained in the name it's uh, it's our love and passion for coffee and for our con- consumers amora means love um and as you know andy uh, amora is really aroma spelled backwards so um it uh, it works out uh, really well it's awesome jim go to the website look at the packaging look at the the way in which they're beautifully designed look at the 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 hand done art uh, that obviously has been printed on the labels. And you could just feel what Jim's been talking about through this interview. Jim, this has been absolutely remarkable. I mean, time has flown by. I could spend another hour or two with you. Maybe we do a whole series and give an online MBA course with everything that you're able to, to, to come across with for the younger entrepreneurs as well. It's absolutely fascinating. Jim, I want to congratulate you, Marina, the entire team of what you're doing, the 10-year anniversary of celebrating the customer resonates with me and other fellow entrepreneurs. And you're really a shining light and a beacon and someone that there's a lot to learn from. And congratulations. And thank you so much for coming on the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Oh, Andy, thank you very much. I can go on for hours as well. And uh, I really appreciate it. And it's, it's, it's just a huge thank you to our uh, customers and uh, our team and um, we're really looking forward to the celebration. And Andy, um, you know, we, we're, we're going to put together a, um, a special code for anybody who is uh, taking the time to uh, listen today. And uh, that code, and we'll let you know when it's going to be available so you can put it out there, Andy, to, to your viewership. But that code's going to be .com magazine. And when you enter that code, um, you're going to uh, receive a uh, discount on anything we have to offer. So um, we're, uh, we'll make sure we get that to you. Um, and uh, I just thank you for uh, bringing us onto the show. And uh, again, I can't, I can't be more appreciative to our customers and, and our Amora team uh, and, uh, you know, all of our partners. And so Marina and I, thank you. <laughs>